Hello and welcome to Metro Home Theater Tech Tips. I'm Brent. I'm Adam. Welcome aboard. So Adam, what have we got today, sir? Well, today is actually a pretty cool episode. We're going to be talking about power in an AV environment. Now, we've had a- Power? Couple, well, kind of. We've had a couple episodes about this before, but not specifically this. We talked about the concepts of making sure you have good surge protection, make sure, making sure you troubleshoot power correctly. But now, let, I want to break it back a little bit and talk more about using power conditioners, power strips, power supplies in an AV environment, inside of a rack, inside of a credenza, inside of something. Okay. That way we have, you know, where do you put things or whatnot. So we'll talk about that. We're also gonna be talking about uh, some news articles, uh, or a news article from our friends over at CE Pro. Uh, and then we're gonna go into some tech support calls that we've had over the past week. It's been an interesting week, particularly since I have still been in and out of the office. This is right. my first week back in a period of time from COVID exposure. Yep. By the way, I'm fine. Yep. So you're good there. So uh, without further ado, let's go into our sponsor. Well, yeah, first off, so what is our sponsor today? Well, we have a pre-recorded video, so we're gonna give that a shot today and see what happens with it. Oh, we're doing an advertisement? We are doing an advertisement. Let's see what happens. And one, two, and three. Hi, everybody. I'm here with Jason Lundell. Jason, uh, what do you do and uh, what's our sponsor for the day? I'm Jason Lundell. I'm the director of buying groups for Metro Home Theater Group, uh, as well as Southeastern Regional Sales for Texas, Oklahoma, Louisiana, and Arkansas. Uh, as today for our sponsor, yeah. we are going to be sponsoring with the AS-P603W power unit. Nice product, has four smart outlets that are app controlled uh, by Tuya. Also has four switched outlets and a really nice outlet on the front for extra and USB charging as well. Perfect. Thanks, Jason. Welcome. Okay, then. So <laughs> we're I'm back. Guessing that the 603 <laughs> is our product of the day. Yes, it is. So the ASP 603 is our product of the day. It's our sponsor for today. I also uh, know she never seemed to move. Uh, no, that is your spot. I, this you is glued my spot. To the floor? Yep, this is my spot. When you guys call me on tech support, this is where I'm standing. Uh, you, uh, you unfortunately, in a broom closet. unfortunately for all of us here in tech support, you are not stationary. You can go away. Yeah. So fortunately, fortunately, thanks. <laughs> You're welcome. So uh, actually, so we'll go ahead and, and go into our actual discussion. But before we do that, guys, thank you so much, and everybody who's watching, thank you so much for watching the video today. Uh, if you have any comments or questions or ideas, go ahead and let us know in the chat. If you are watching live, if you are watching after the fact and you're looking at the pre-recorded video, leave those comments and questions in the comment section down below. Uh, if you have any stories as well, when you're talking about power, what you think is the best location for power inside of a rack or some different things like that, leave that down in the comment section. If you're watching live, put it in the chat over there. As always, uh, leave uh, a subscription if this is your first time watching us. It would be very, very helpful. And why uh, is that? Because we are on our way to 1,000 subscribers. Yes, we are. Because guess what? We made our goal of 900 subscribers. We are now at 909 as the time of this filming, uh, which is, you know, we're very thankful for everybody who does subscribe and watch our videos. Thank you again so very much. And the uh, calls. And the calls. And if you're, and the comments. If, if you're a new subscriber, uh, come into the chat with us and talk to us about the why you subscribe leave a comment down in the comment section let us know why uh we'd like to hear that and, and know you know what brings you by and what brings you into the video with us so now uh, just for what yeah. it's worth because adam leads a much much healthier lifestyle than i am you can send me flower flowers candy and money <laughs> Uh, yeah, so we're, no we're always looking for... No Adam. He leads a much healthier lifestyle. Exactly. And, of course, uh, subscribe, uh, share, a like, and that... Click the bell. The little bell notification is very Instagram, helpful overall. Instagram, Twitter, so. and Facebook. And Facebook. Yep, share it to everybody. Let them know what's going on. Uh, but, again, as always, thank you for everybody watching it. Um, we have a visitor from North Car North California. So, uh, and I'm going to... I I'm going to say it incorrectly. I do apologize. Uh, Fetonia. Uh, Fetonia. P-H-E-O-T-O-N-I-A. Fe 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 I'm going to go with your first one, Fetonia. Fetonia. There you go. I, I could be very wrong also. Well, that's what it is. So welcome to the show. And we, thank you. We, yeah, thank and you. And if we spell, if we said it wrong, realize we're Southern white boys and... Uh, yeah. So let's go and get in, into our topic. So the, what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you a bunch of questions. Uh -oh. and then I'm Last gonna, time this and then, happened. And then I'm going to tell you you're wrong. I, as I just said, last time this happened. Okay. So, so rock on. Okay. As you all can see, we have our rack here. Now... 
with this rack that Please we have over here. Please do not use this rack as your guidance for the work. Please don't, because this is our lab rack, lab rat, lab rack, uh, that it, we tear apart and put together and tear apart and put together, and it's always changing, always you something really different is happening. You really don't see the backside of that. Yeah, well, you can kind of see through some of it. But um, when you're dealing with a rack, something of this size, or even the small racks, or whatever it may Cabinet be, pieces. the location of the power supply is probably one of the most important things when you design you mean it. Power strip, power surge strip, power, yeah. US, U, UPS, or power distribution yes. location. There you go. The PDU. PDA. Uh, PDA. No, PDU. PDU. Power distribution unit location. There you go. All that to say. Um, so, Brent, where yes. in a rack should you put a PDU? And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put a little caveat in here with this not a vertical PDU. Okay, and you and I were discussing this earlier and yep. having varied opinions. Okay. Because I look at the rack from a heat source at this, that's my first step. Sure. When I look at a rack, what's going to create the most heat and where's it going to go? Well, where does heat go? And heat goes up. Yes. So where do you not want the heat? At the bottom. Exactly. So typically what I do is put my amps at the top mm -hmm. with the smallest amp being the very top piece. Yep. The next size amp being slightly down because typically the heat and the weight is in the back of that product right so that it flows up right now when you're looking at power the biggest issue to deal with power now is physical accessibility okay and why is that well i mean honestly when you need to troubleshoot and give support for the rack that you've put together for it you know being able to access everything is probably the one of my most important things whenever i'm designing it when you look at most products now avrs amplifiers they're going to be between 16 and 20 inches deep. Sure. Your typical power product, like this, is going to be between 6 and 8 inches deep without right. the plugs. Right. And if it's a 1U or even a 2U, you can't reach in between AVRs and amplifiers or deep shelves to get to something that far to the front. Exactly. So the toughest thing when you're looking at power is not so much where it goes in relation to heat because there is no heat to speak of. Yeah. And they're very shiny or short, not shiny, short. Short. So they're out well, of the they're, heat they're, environment. They can be shiny. I mean, that one's not necessarily shiny, but, but it could be. Yeah, anyways. It really comes down to can you physically get your hand to the terminals to plug stuff in? So I've got pretty meaty dainty hands. Little hands. Uh, dainty hands, right? Dainty yeah, I've got pretty hands. meaty hands. And so for me, it's actually a little bit more difficult to get in there and do that. Um, so, you know, in, in my case, I'm going to want it in a much wide open space, much more yes. wide open space in order to reach Absolutely. inside and work and on it. That is one of the advantages of a vertical yes. strip. Yeah, everything's there on the back of the rack. You can easily access it. And the nice thing is, is that all your equipment is going up and down that rack. And so a vertical rack, it puts power pretty much everywhere you need it on that rack. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, and if you can, uh, you really, uh, if you can put a vertical rack, uh, rack power unit in there, go with a vertical rack power unit. The drawback to that is, in most cases, vertical units, you don't have any kind of front access to control them yes. if you need to. Now, not all power strips have front control. Right. For example, R603, which you demoed earlier. Yep and the advertisement yep. does not have a tremendous amount of front control. What it does have is an on and off yep. for the for the outlets. In this case, a USB-A and a USB-C terminal. And of note, the switch here, it does only control four of the outlets on the right. back. The other four are the smart outlets that you control through the app uh, for that purpose. But again, great piece for that. And we will discuss the difference between switch controlled and IP or app controlled outlets because yes. that's very critical. And depending on where what you're going to yes. plug into it. And I also am a firm believer in having a front outlet. Yeah. It's just nice to have that there, honestly, for no other reason than the vacuum cleaner. Yeah. Well, and uh, well, I, I don't believe it's an okay thing to plug in the vacuum cleaner in, <laughs> okay. into the into the uh, the power for the rack. But I mean, if it's, it's going to get the job if done, you've right? Got a good power unit mm -hmm. it's filtering out any noise exactly that vacuum cleaner is created and if you're using the 603 yep that's not a problem yep exactly now um uh, actually uh so it's it's Faytonia. Uh, Faytonia. yep Faytonia. and uh, the they're asking little thing over the e uh it it, would well, be for I'm, yeah i'm sure so uh they're asking what is our opinion on a cyber power ups system a 30 amp input with four 20 amp circuits out that's okay First off, 30 amp is awesome. Yeah. Because it gives you a tremendous amount of flexibility in the rack. The drawback to having a 30 amp device yep. is very seldomly, A, 
are you going to have a 30 amp receptacle yep. at your rack unless you got involved at the very beginning? Yeah. And if you can, more power to you. Yeah. Well, literally. More power <laughs> for so, um, and having the 420 amps like that, because each of those 20 amps, are they individually circuit breaker? Because I don't know that product. Yeah, that, I, that I'm not for sure it. either. Do they have individual circuit breakers on each 20 amp circuit? Mm -hmm. um, so and how are you supporting 420 amp circuits on a 30 amp? Correct. So here's the thing: it, 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 with when it comes to power, so that's it's, really it's seven additive. and a half by four. Yeah, it's it, it's additive because what's happening is when you when you have Let's say you have a 30 amp and then you have two 20 amps. We'll, we'll knock it down to two. Okay, if so you let's, are using that at full quick. power, you're going to wind up with 40 amps, which you don't have. You have 30. Can you give me an overhead? I man? sure can. Let's go over here and do this. And there you go. Okay, so we're going to assume all these are 20 amp circuits. Mm -hmm. They're 20 amp outlets. They're not 20 amp circuits because we've only got 30 amps going into the device. Right. So what we have is a grand total of... 30 amp draw capability. So if we have a 20 amp right here, that means the rest of these have to total only 10 amps. Yeah. So they're no longer 20 amp circuits mm -hmm. or 20 amp capability. So if this, even at this point, we're looking really at five, five, uh, five, two and a half, and two and a half. Correct. So at this point, we may say we got a couple of amps on the big one. The rest of this is going to have to be sources like Apple TVs, Amazons. Gosh, maybe a pre-pro with no power capability. Yeah, um, something that's not really pulling a lot of amperage at that. Um, so having the bigger the current is at the front end, mm -hmm. the more capabilities you have down the line. Now, I would rather see multiple 20 amp circuits coming to the rack Yes. Been a single 30. Yeah, or if you can have multiple 30s, again, you have to work very closely with your uh, electrician, uh, especially if you're coming in as a new installation for a, a new yeah. house build. Um, uh, that's that's going to be large gauge cable and a yeah. specialized terminal. Yeah, and and so you at that point you so. can't buy an off a readily off the shelf power unit, you have to buy one that's specifically designed right. with that twist turn lock terminal. Yeah. So if you, again, if you can get in there at that point and you can get in ahead of the uh, the design and work with the electrician to have that in place, that's awesome. it's a wonderful thing to have. Our recommendation more in that avenue is better. So if you can have multiple circuits of the 30 or multiple circuits of the 20, uh, depending on what it is you're working with, you're going to put yourself in a better position for any kind of headroom you may need for the amplifiers or anything else that's in the rack that needs to be the powered. The thing to remember, current is just like wattage in an amplifier. Mm -hmm. I don't care, if, if you add all your products up under max draw, we're gonna assume your products draw 40 amps. I'm picking that number, but let's say 40 amps. Sure. That doesn't mean give yourself 45 amps worth of service. Mm -hmm. That means gives yourself 80 amps worth of service because when those devices warm up, they lose efficiency. Right. When they lose efficiency, they draw more current. Right. And you're under load in a theater. It's going to start drawing a lot draw of yeah. Current. It's going to draw a lot of current on that. So. so better safe than sorry. Yeah. Um, that's why I prefer multiple 20 amp circuits mm -hmm. off multiple circuit breakers in your panel. Just make sure they're all sharing the same ground leg. Yes. As per two weeks ago, I think was our power discussion. Two or three weeks ago, yeah. Yep. With Rob. Yep. So, grounding is super critical on yes. that. Yes. And particularly on your power product, um, I legitimately cannot tell you because it's depressing how many times I've gone to a job site and seen the center leg pulled off yeah. a power circuit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't don't do that. Don't do that. Um, ground it whenever possible. Ground That's it. That's very important. Ground things inside the rack to each other. Ground the rack. Ground the rack to the to the the grounding pin on the plug. You know, do whatever you can to ground everything. Uh, as much as possible. And then, of course, from that point, make sure everything that you have is connected to the same ground at the panel. Otherwise, you might have put noise and herring bones. The noise floor discussion we had two weeks ago yes. comes into play. Well, and that actually uh, comes into play whenever we're talking about HDMI problems because, again, oh, yeah. HDMI is a wonderful ground. And so when you have a TV that's further away and you've got the rack over here and they're on different plugs, ground loops. you get that ground loop or you get a differential in ground potential. And so what you wind up with is you have the ground trying to dissipate across your HDMI connection, shorting out your HDMI Yeah, plugs. you can burn stuff up. Ask us how we know this. 
Uh, we've done that ourselves. In fact, we've done that to our studio <laughs> or our lab here at, at, at the yeah, shop. Don't do that. Yeah, which was which was great. It's embarrassing um, when those you when those of us who are telling you not to do that. So they're saying, uh, uh, Faitoni is saying that it should be at the top of the rack, and we're talking about the, U, the, right. the PDU, should be at the top of the rack right below the fan set. So that puts you in a really good spot for reaching as up to be able to reach into it. Now, yes. And here's the problem. If you have a large product right underneath it. It becomes a little difficult right. to see and whatever and else you have going on. Into, that's the advantage of the vertical. Now, again, this is something that's very, well, honestly, it becomes very personal when it comes to one one installer to the next someone's going to say put it at the top of the rack someone's going to say put it at the bottom i'm of the proponent i'm of the type of person that says i'm gonna put it in the middle well and that's because you can probably control the devices around it easiest exactly to give yourself the most space and if yeah. you were to look at our rack yep we actually have two one at the top and one at the bottom all the way to the bottom that you all can't see but we have uh, in fact this is our um this is our old uh power supply that the, we no yes. longer carry anymore um, which was a great piece, but is now being replaced by the 603. Which has the control built in. Exactly. It. Now, let's talk about control. Hi, Ellen. Ellen's back. Hi, Ellen. <laughs> Long time no see, young lady. Um, now, let's see. Also, that way the PDU... In, okay. So, uh, Faitonia is saying install it on a shelf instead of directly to the rack. And their reasoning is, is that that way the PDU can be pushed back towards the back of the rack. So, if, for instance, if the front of the PDU maybe has something sticking out of it mm -hmm. so that you can keep that, that flat uh, front to it as well. I'm personally, I would rather mount it to the rack myself, but I like that aesthetic of things being mounted to the rack. I like the idea... Um, it was at Middle Atlantic. They do those custom, custom face, rack, yeah, yeah the, the face plates for and it. Th I love that that's that look, and that very flat look. There's pros and cons to that. Obviously, rack mounting when you mount the product directly to the rack with the ears, it actually increases the rigidity of the rack with that product. Yes. However, when you do a rack shelf, you also gain that rigidity gain, and yes, you actually do. because the bolts are a little further apart. Yep. That increases the strength, and if you do the Middle Atlantic correctly with the back braces, yes, which a lot of guys don't. Correct. Um, it holds this product in place when you're plugging and unplugging stuff. Yeah. That becomes a huge plus because things just tend to want to move around. They also do a really cool thing, Middle Atlantic, uh, not, not to jump too far off topic, but they do a really cool thing. If you have multiple devices that you want to fit onto one rack uh, shelf, one shelf, you can call them up and order a custom faceplate for it to have them next to each other. I did that on a job uh, a couple years back that I had uh, a Roku and a, I think it was a cable box of some kind, mm -hmm. and they fit really well next to each other, but I wanted, I still wanted that aesthetic of everything being closed off on the front, and I was able to order it from them. So that was, that was a great thing, and not to tout a whole bunch of other people that, but it was, it was really nice, so anyways. And aesthetics definitely, particularly on the clients that show off their rack. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, it gives a really nice. That is very important. The same face, you know, the, all the way down, the look, the center line. Yep. Um, one of the things that Al, Adam and I both like is when you look at a product line where there might be a visual cue on each product. Yes, that yes. That lines up all the way down. Yep, yep. Makes, their, makes it all nice and neat and orderly. That, when they got that one new product in that was designed out of house and it doesn't have it. Yeah. It's like, really? <laughs> uh, actually, yes, you're right. Uh, Faitoni is saying you should probably use a 42U when you only need 24. Yes. Uh, because honestly, space everything out, yep. get all that heat uh, dissipation look, out there. If give you enough can room. get at least six foot of rack. Yeah. Yeah. Even if you don't need six foot of rack. Yeah. Get six foot of rack. Pretty much. Well, you uh, can always put drawers in it. In, in fact, the the, uh, the space that you and I work on uh, at, at that house, it, we, we have, have two, two racks that size. Six six foot tall. Actually, this is taller than six foot. We have two of these racks. I remember over we had there. to cut because of the ceiling. Yep. Because we actually had to get underneath that's right. a wire rack. Yeah, that's right. That we could not remove. Yeah. We had to take one and a half U's. Yep, I remember. Out of the height of the both racks, so yep. we lost two inches. I think so. Yeah, but honestly, the, the, it worked out great because I have so much extra space for extra equipment, but primarily for heat dissipation and, and clearing and everything out. And we can separate all the networking. Yep. And security product on one rack and all the AV, AV and, and control. another. Yep. And also gives us the ability to really localize power control of the devices. Yes. Do I need, a, uh, how big of a UPS do I need? Mm -hmm. Well, we need a big UPS for the networking. We need very little for the sources because when power goes down, we're not running the amp anyhow. Exactly. So that's one, actually that kind of feeds into the next topic. Should you use a UPS of some kind? And yes. yes. The, the, it's very quick and simple, very short and, and early. Anything that has a processor yeah. in it yep. should be on a UPS. If for no other reason than uptime and reboots, because 
God knows how many times reboots can mess you up. Yes. So, which you and I learned about that this past week, actually. Again. <laughs> Again. So, when that is, uh, with that said, UPSs are wonderful devices to have in the rack for power because of that simple fact that it's going to keep mission critical items up and running. Yes. Because a lot of times what will happen is that if the power goes out, it's usually caused by something external by the power company, whether it be a lightning strike or somebody hitting a telephone pole or whatever it may be. In rush. In rush of, of some kind, and so you lose power. Now, most of the time in most areas, you are going to be down without power for at most 20 minutes. And then at that point, it can come back on and you have power back. But the problem is, is that as we've learned, you and I have learned, uh, in when the power comes back on, that may actually cause problems with, with your networking based on what device comes on first uh, and what device comes on after that. It may have an effect on control yes, systems. Yes, we had quite the uh, discussion on that, that yesterday, yes, and we I did. learned a hell of a lot from our uh, IP guy. Yes, yes, uh, it, uh, I did as well. So it was uh, very, very insightful, and it actually worked out really well for today's video. Um, so with that said, um, uh, actually, Faitoni is saying that the job that they're working on is a retro uh, refit. And mm. so uh, you can, it, again, if you have a good in, uh, electrician that you're working with, um, you can sometimes, just like we have to run wires in a retrofit job for low voltage, a lot of times the electrician can run new wires for a retrofit job to get the type of power that you're re requiring in that location. So, And if you have an under, obviously, customer relations count a lot there. Yes. Yeah. Now, one of the things that you and I have, because Florida has no ground. Yep. We're constantly having to reboot products. Yes. Apple TVs, Roku's, Crestron processors, Control 4 processors, yep. networking devices. And I am a big fan of the ability to have the chance and the ability to reset it. Yep. I'm a little scared about IP controlled for, for network devices. Yes. I have no issue with control on AV devices. Yep. Because so, you don't reset them until the network's back up Anyway, so this is actually a caveat with this product here specifically and we've talked about this a couple times already But with the ASP 603 this is really designed to be it does have remote control capabilities Meaning you can pull up the app wherever you have internet access and so long as this is accessing the cloud or accessing the servers You can reset the outlets on the ASP 603 But and here's the big but I, and actually the thing with this is that it's it has to access the cloud the, the reset on this is not a single code. It's not a code that just says turn off and back on. It's two codes. You, uh, when you hit the reset button, it's receiving the off command, and then after that, it's receiving the on command. So if you plug in your networking equipment to this, it will not turn back on if you hit the reset button because it's only received the off command. And this was a conscious decision. Yes. Because some things you don't want to power up automatically. Yep. And there was much discussion that went into this and yeah. not a few short of arguments yeah. on the decision to not have it reboot. Right. And it comes down to plain and simply, sometimes you just don't want devices to do that. Now, I certainly would not say that other things are in process that will allow that capability. Stay tuned. This was meant primarily for your typical smaller residential job. Yes. Where you're lighting control processor, for example, yep. or your your Apple TVs or your pre-pro that locks up yes. when it gets spiked. That is what goes into the controlled outlets. Yes. What doesn't go into the controlled outlets is... The router, Any basically any kind of networking equipment that's between this device and the outside. And what that means is that if you have a switch of some kind, that's a PoE switch that's maybe powering your surveillance cameras and maybe your Wi-Fi access, um, so long as this still has a Wi-Fi connection and it's still any device that any networking device that's after this, you can reboot it. That's okay. But anything that's between this and the outside, so that means your uh, any switches that this is connected to that the that this is connected to the Wi-Fi that that it's connected to, any routers any modems you don't want to put on those outlets but and but, a, and but you can plug it into the four switched outlets that are physically switched by the power switch in the front which is the correct answer because at that point of course if you need to reset those you are making the conscious decision to do so and you have somebody who's physically there to do that yes so and the thing with the switched outlets is not just for power outages it's just for stuff being locked up because your cable company did something weird down the street. 
Right. Our stuff just happens. Yeah. And in the past, you you know, you had to go up to your Apple TV, unplug it, plug it back in, or your Roku, or un completely unplug the Amazon Fire Stick, things like this. And with this, you don't have to do that. Right. You can sign in your customer saying, yeah, my Direct TV is locked up. Not a problem, madam. Give me a second. I'm, I'm at dinner with my wife. Give me a moment, sir. Hold on, dear. Off. On. Okay, give it a minute, sir. You're going to see the reboot screen. Give me a call if it still if it still has a problem. Click. And you, then you're off the you phone. Back, you can move back on. To dinner. Exactly. Now, let's move on from here. Let's, Where are we going? I'm going to ask you a question. Another question. Uh oh. When you are lacing up the rack. Yes. And you are designing the or deciding the pathways of everything. Where does your power go? Does it go on the right side or does it go on the left side? It depends on where the majority of the out of the inlet plugs are on my gear. So, and yeah. because nobody likes me, uh huh, they do this. It's all in the, on opposite like, sides. Really? <laughs> exactly. Um, and Adam and I did a large rack system starting 18 months ago yep still doing it and he spent three days here mm -hmm. lacing power and of course it's beautiful yeah and we're already changing gear yes we are yes we are what but and again but here's the thing so uh as much as we would love to have uh, all manufacturers put everything on the same side unfortunately it it's not gonna happen so what is your preference well um honestly i like the right side um, I'm with you in that if the majority of the equipment that I have is on the left-hand side, I'm going to lace it up on the left-hand side. However, I have noticed that there is a slight overwhelming desire to put everything on there the right-hand side. And the, the sad part for that for me is it's also where they want to put the HDMI outs on most of the AVRs. Yes, it is. So I got power here, network, and HDMI there. Pretty much all together in one spot. So then I wind up putting multiple lacing bars across the back of the rack. Yep. So I can take the power on one bar over and down. Yep. And then the networking video on another bar over and down. Because what's one thing we don't want to do? Power by anything. Yeah. So put the power all the way by itself. And, and everyone, this is a very, um, I'll be honest, this is a very basic concept when it comes to rack, uh, rack design and, and uh, system design. Power needs to go away from any other connection. When you are looking at your speaker wire, you want to get power away from that oh, or else you are going to get wire. a hum. You want to make sure that if you have networking connection, your power is away from your networking or else you're going to get drop packets. Uh, if you are using HDMI, make sure that you are making your power is going away from your HDMI connection because what do we run into? Noise, hearing bones, problems, sir. Oh, oh, uh, the call this week with the, uh, the spark igniter in the grill. Oh, yes. Uh, hold that thought okay. because we are going to be talking about the now, tech support calls that we have. While we're talking about racks, I do not like nylon ties. Okay. Zip ties. Zip ties. Zip ties, now, nylon ties, cable ties. I use zip ties in my preliminary wiring. Okay. But then I will go back and vel when it's done. Yes. I will go back, put Velcro on everything and cut the zip ties out. Sure. For a couple of reasons. Yep. First off, once the zip ties are in there, and you got a gazillion of the darn things because, oh, I put this wire in, I zip tie it, then I put this wire in, then I zip tie it, then I put this wire in, then I zip tie it, because you want everything really pretty. Yep, yep. Then you wind up with a gazillion zip ties, and if you have to make a change, you're it in all the field, you don't again. have all the hours that you do up front. Right. You got to get in, do the job, and get out because you're in their house now and they're living there yep. now. Exactly. And then you got all these little cut pieces laying on the floor. Yep. So there's quite a bit of cleanup. Now, I will say that I am a pro proponent for the zip ties. I like zip ties. But for me, it's because the, I, I feel like the, the Velcro straps, they don't hold things where I want them to go. I like to make sure that everything is going exactly where I want it. I don't want the cable to have a mind of its own and bend in a certain direction where I don't want it to go. So it's another employee like you. Sure. It wants to do what it wants to do. Pretty much. So <laughs> with that, I do like the zip ties for, for that, that style, that design for it, and it works out really well. Now, here's another question for you. When you are dealing with audio. Yes. What type of, ser uh, not search suppression, because that's built into most of these units. By the way, this, uh, the 603 has 2,100 joules, joules uh, of, search, protection. Yeah, of protection. Um, which, uh, 
when you are looking at audio, uh, we're going to use audio specifically because this does play effect into video as well. We talked about it just a minute ago. But what is the importance of a clean power supply? Well, audio, digital video has its own issues. Yes. Analog audio and in the old days, component audio and composite audio, if you have noisy power, mm -hmm. it would absolutely interfere with the noise floor and raise the noise floor on your signal. Right. Meaning, you, instead of hearing absolute silence, what you would get is a tss. It almost sounds sound like a fan noise coming through the speakers. Yeah, exactly. And that's incredibly annoying because now the quiet passages mm -hmm. are indiscernible. And for video, that problem was worse because you wound up with mosquito noise or hearing bones. Yep. Now with HDMI, it's generally not hearing bones. Yep. It will be mosquito noise. And digital circuits, ones and zeros, they don't know if it's real or not. When you know if it looks like a, if it's high. Yep. It's a one. If it's low, it's a zero. It doesn't care if it's a, care if it's noise it or not. Yeah, right. exactly. They're going to try to reproduce it in whatever format it's being presented to it as. Right. And the whole digital is digital, it either works or it doesn't work, Yes, is only true in the lab under absolute perfect conditions. And that's not here, by the way. Yeah. So when um, the importance of all of the power that we've talked about today and all the other episodes that we had talked about before is really you need to make sure that you take all those concepts and apply them to every type of job that you're working on. Whether it be a small single room setup where you have one TV, maybe not an AVR of any kind, just a couple sources, and maybe the, the router is in that same room. It's very important that you still take these concepts for good power distribution and apply those to that small job. Now, that means do not use standard two wire extension cords with more than one device plugged into it. Correct. If you have to go from an outlet on a properly grounded power distribution unit yep. to a device that's far enough away where the power cord won't make it, yep. and the only device on that cord yep. is that device, yep. you're fine. But as soon as you put multiple devices on that extension cord without the proper grounding internal mm -hmm. that this has, that's when you start running into the noise problems. Right. So don't load up your your modem and your LED lights on an extension cord. Yep. So with all of that said, things like having the TV mounted on the wall up above a credenza where all the equipment is. In, even in that case, yes, technically you could run a power cord to it. Um, I think in the reality is that when you have a, uh, in, in that position, you need to use something that's actually designed to be used inside of a wall, which is what Brent is pulling out here. Um, this is the AS uh, Power Relocate, P uh, AS dash P W R L O C A T E, so Power Locate. What this is essentially is going to give you the ability to give power at the TV from down below, and you're not running an extension cord, you're actually running something that's designed to be inside and the wall. Certified yes. to be in the wall by UL. Exactly, and it's important to have that because. If you just run an extension cord, in most states, it's illegal. You cannot run an extension cord inside the wall because it's not designed to be inside the wall. Now, the reality is, is that in most cases, you're going to be safe if you do that, but until, the need, until it's, it's actually certified and, and saying that it's legal to do that, don't do it. More importantly, if there's ever a problem in the house and the fire inspector comes, yep. Guess whose butt's on the line? It's you. I'm sorry, Even but it is. Even if you had nothing to do with the fire, yep. you had something to do with the fire. Exactly. So it's very important if, you know, look at our products that we have here. We have the Power Relocate Kit as well. But honestly, find an electrician that you can work closely with that you can, you know. If your give, company doesn't already do that. If, yeah, if your company doesn't already do it, um, track one down, take them out to lunch and say, hey, I'm looking for somebody to partner with as an electrician. Because honestly, we, you know, whether or not you are certified as an electrician yourself, uh, or if you're not teaming up with anybody already, or if you don't have anybody on staff, it's good to have an electrician in your back pocket so that when a situation like that does come up, you can say, we are the company that does things the right way. We call an electrician to do things that we need done. And most customers will appreciate that and will appreciate your honesty. Yeah. The few that don't, you probably don't want as customers anyway. Exactly. So in review, power, how important is power? Well, power in, in the grand scheme of AV is the number one concern. Yeah. It really should be the first thing that you because think about in the, the design. Foundation exactly. That everything else is built on. And everything that we have discussed, strangely enough, in the past six weeks. Yes. Whether it's audio, mm -hmm. video distribution, yep. 
Uh, Balins, yep. extenders. It's almost like I did that by cable. design or something. I'm not buying into that. <laughs> I'm not believing it. You can tell me that, I ain't believing it. All of that, the foundation is right here. Yes. If you don't have a good solid, and if you can put the 30 amp in, man, more power to yeah, you. Yeah, definitely. But if you don't have a good solid foundation with this, mm -hmm. everything you do after that is suspect, even if it's the best gear on the market. Exactly. So, Brent, what I'd like to do next is let's talk about what's going on in the world. Okay. Well, in the AV world, I, I know you've got a couple of things in your, in your list there, so well, talk to me. I, one, I've got one big thing going on, and this is actually kind of important. This is We talked about the video, uh, video distribution, audio distribution, and distributed audio before. Yes. So this plays directly into that. So our friends over at CE Pro uh, released an article recently talking about how many zones people are using now versus when they were doing before. And so basically what okay, it's come down to... Okay, I haven't seen to, this article, so this is all new to me. Yeah, so basically what it's come down to is that over the past two years, the average... Uh, uh, this is we're going to go on price point. The average price point has actually decreased per zone. So and this is a multi-zone setup. So for mm -hmm. instance, you have a, a 12... 16, four, whatever, how many zones of audio you have, the price per zone has actually decreased. So why? that's good. I don't know why exactly. They didn't exactly go into that anyways. Is it because the gear has gotten less expensive? Do mostly, we know? yes, okay. mostly. And so, and the amount of time that it takes to actually get that stuff out there. So um, this is good for, for multiple reasons. So because the simple fact is, is that it's cheaper for the consumer to, to buy into it. And add more stuff. Which means that they're going to want to do it more often, be more inclined to agree to do multi-zone audio. Um, but also it makes it an easier sell and, and be able to sell well, more items for let's it. Let's look at everything we do in general. Yeah. Um, 25 years ago, if you wanted a good projector, mm -hmm. it was twenty five to $50,000. Not a great projector, a good projector. Right. Twenty-five to fifty thousand dollars. Right. And then when you got to the G nineties, you know, and above, it was a phenomenal projector. But you got to serious dollars. If you wanted a pre-pro mm -hmm. that was a good pre-pro, it was five grand. Mm -hmm. And then you had amplification, and then you had distributed audio, whether it's a lawn or early days of uh, um, the uh, Sonances or Crestron. Mm -hmm. It was huge dollars. Now, TVs are coming down um an 85 inch is 1200 dollars now now yep. is it a great 85 inch it's a pretty decent one it's decent yeah it's 85 inches yeah um avrs with dolby atmos are 500 dollars or less mm -hmm. sources are 59 dollars now for 4k hdr from the streamers yep so it's not a thousand dollar dvd player it's not five thousand dollar processor right so what you can accomplish as a package has gone down, what hasn't gone down and should not go down should not is the quality and the price of you doing the job. Right. Don't discount your labor. Just because this has dropped, yep. what you're doing now has more value than it did 10 years ago. Right. Because it's harder to make all this stuff work together now. And the disparate technologies, 10 years ago, you weren't worried about networking, really. No. 10 years ago, you certainly didn't have to tie in a, a variety of lights and ceiling fans and HVACs. Right. Yeah, there was a few guys with April Air, mm -hmm. but it wasn't, you weren't dealing with, with uh, Alexa, you weren't dealing with Google Home, you weren't dealing with Apple Home, you right. weren't dealing with Zigbee and Z-Wave as a rule, with multiple formats. Yeah. Now you have to know so much more outside of AV. Right. That the value you take to your dealer Ha or to your customer has increased dramatically. The schooling mm -hmm. now to understand this has gone up dramatically. Yeah. So everyone watching again, thank you so much. Um, and really, uh, how do you think this is going to affect you and your business? Do you feel that the drop in prices per zone, uh, this is of course an average, um, do you think the drop in prices per zone is going to increase the number of zones or increase the number of sales that you may get? Uh, or do you feel like it's not really affecting you any because everything's kind of staying steadily? Let us know in the comments. Let us know in the chat. Uh, like I said before, we do How watch the comment section. Doing? Yeah, what's your are average you doing number of outside zones? Outside zones. What amps are you using? We, yeah. we did a large job recently with. A lot? I'm thinking 32 channels of amplification. Yeah, yeah, roughly. Um, yep. And some of those were Control 4, and some of those were Crown amps for the outside. Yep because we wanted something that was going to last and play forever. Yeah. And I consider that a fairly basic job. Not there was it's not the number of zones. Yeah. It's what are they doing? Exactly. 
Yeah, and so it let was us a know. fairly simple job, but just a lot of right. simple. So let us know what you think, how it's going to affect you and your business. We'd love to hear from you uh, on what's happening in your world. Uh, let us know in the comments. Let us know in the chat section. Uh, and we're happy to, to talk to you on the phone as well. You can, of course, give us a call, and we'll give that phone number here in a little bit. But, Brent, another question? It's tech support time. Okay. So what happened? To the grill? Yeah, to the grill. Okay. Now, so you, this was I already one. know about this, so, but I, this is great. I get a call from a guy who's got uh, an outside TV, a Sunbright, an HDMI cable running inside the grill area and extenders. The extender is a three foot cable from the Sunbright to the extender and then the category cable went back behind the grill to inside the house and every time they fired the grill up they lost the picture. Right. Well why is this happening? Well it's fairly simple. Um, top down shot? You want to do some yeah, art? Yeah we're going to do a top, we're gonna, my favorite part of the show. Basically a grill igniter It's a spark plug. Yeah. That's all it is. And when you ignite the grill, it creates a large electronic blast that has a radius of about 15 feet. Yeah. Because this is all noise. Yeah. Yeah. Now, here's what happens. It doesn't, it's not that the data on the category cable goes away. Yeah, no, it just. It's simply this. Let's assume you're out to dinner with your significant other. Yep. You're having a nice, quiet conversation over a glass of Merlot, and your drunk buddy comes up and starts yelling in your ear. Yep. Now your wife is still trying to talk to you in a quiet, polite voice because she's not wanting to be rude. Well, and she's very nice and very polite. Yeah. Love you, sweetie. Your wife. <laughs> but your drunk buddy uh -huh. isn't. Uh huh. Now, can you still hear her? Eh. Not really. Not really. Not really. Yeah. Now she's still talking. Yep. Information's still being shared. Yep. But all I can hear is <laughs> that screaming friend. Right. And that's exactly what happens here. So what was the fix? Uh, the fix is switch out his spark gap igniter yep. to a glow plug igniter. Right. So. And they do exist. Yep. And if you run into this problem, Contact your grill manufacturer or go on to uh, go online yep. and look up glow plug. It is not quite as fast and it's, it's not quite as fat as satisfying as pressing that button and hear that big boom. Yeah. But they work great and you don't have this issue. Right. So the car audio guys will know this very well. Yeah, they will. So with that said, I. Uh, that's our, our really kind of interesting tech call that we had this past week. Yeah, you don't get that one off. No, that, that one's that, that's, that's kind of up there with hearing the voice of God uh, in, in the speaker. Now, I did get one today. Okay. From uh, San Francisco, guys working, uh, San Diego, guys working on a yacht. Okay. And everything's fine except. Oh, yeah, you were on the phone for like an hour with this yep. one. Yeah. Everything's fine except on Disney Plus and Netflix, and they're running an audio extractor okay. off an Apple TV. Okay. And some of the shows, it just doesn't work. Hmm. Why is that? I don't know. Atmos. Oh, they were getting an Atmos signal. And on audio those extractors. Shows. Don't do Atmos. Because Atmos is object oriented. Yep. Standard. And even though this was a certified and authorized Dolby audio extractor with down mixing. It was a Dolby Digital, it was not a Dolby right, not Atmos. Right, Atmos. Yes. Now, they actually were running the sources into a multi-channel AVR and trying to split out analog audio. It's like, that's not the way to do this. The yeah. way to do this, honestly, is with the matrix that has down converting built into it. Yeah. Sadly, not one of ours. Well, and the thing is also, are they going to be able to get the down converting from the Dolby Atmos? Well, no, they have to take, they have to turn, the yeah. Atmos has to be out. But yeah. They had three zones mm -hmm. that they were running off this AVR. Yep. Now, I'm not a big fan of that to start with. Yeah. So my solution, here's what I recommend. Get a, a matrix. Mm -hmm. All your sources go into your matrix. And you will come out of zone one into the AVR because you want to maintain your Dolby digital. Yeah. And from the AVR to the display so you keep all your nice on-screen stuff. Yep. And then out of zone two, you go directly to the television, and then you take the down mixed audio for zone two into AVR, say aux input. Yep. Zone three, same thing, say into the CD input. Yep. This way, whatever they select tracks, and you never change the input on the AVR. Yeah. And it keeps everything simpler from a programming standpoint. Yep. And from a reliability standpoint. And when a yacht leaves port and it ain't working, you don't want to get that 
radio phone no, call. No, no, not at all. Not at all. So, everybody, thank you again for checking in with us today and watching us uh, talk about power and the importance of it in an AV system. Uh, check in next week because next week starts off episode one of our six-part series. On HDMI. HDMI. De deconstruction. Deconstruction, exactly. Our first part, we're going to be talking about hot 5 volt and hot plug. Here it is. So, and that's going to be what we're going to be talking about for that next week. It's going to be next Wednesday at 3 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, you'll have to do the math for yourself because I don't know enough about it to know where, what the Western time is or the 12. Pacific time. Or yeah, thank you. Uh, so check us, uh, check us, check in with us next week uh, on Wednesday at 3 p.m. We're going to be talking about uh, HDMI, and that's the first episode of a six-part series. We're going to be doing HDMI deconstruction. We're actually going to be talking about the actual cabling in, or pardon me, the actual wires inside of an HDMI cable, the terminals, and the what positions. they do. Exactly. And the system in general. Yeah. Now, I do have a question okay. for our audience. One of the things that Adam has been pursuing and wanting since day one of this is a audio-only blog show. Yep. You know, just live, mostly discussions, because a lot of what Adam and I talk about when we're sitting back here going over stuff and six foot, obviously, distancing sure, sure. with our mask on, is a ton of, it's interesting and a ton of fun. Yeah. And we were curious, would you be interested in sharing that with us? Is it something you would want to hear? Yeah. If you guys would like to hear us, uh, basically hear more from us is what it's coming it's, down to. And, and what we discuss yeah. throughout the day. Yeah. Uh, let us know if that's something you'd be is, interested this in. This is our professional side. Yeah. We, we, we dress up, we look pretty yeah. or as, as much as we can. Yeah. And we try to stay on topic for the 40 minutes. Try to anyways. But we let it we let it ride whenever whenever we're talking on our yeah, own. Yeah, particularly so with good questions. If that's something that that you want to hear more of, uh, more from us, if you think that you'd be interested in that, let us know in the comments or in, or in the uh, the chat, uh, and we'll we'll see about bringing that to fruition and see what we can do with it. So, but with all that said, again, everybody, thank you again for checking in with us. As always, we pr we appreciate a subscribe, a like, a share, and that little bell notification. Share it to Facebook, YouTube. Tell your YouTube. friends and neighbors, your fellow dealers. Yep. Have them join us. Yep. We're trying to get to 1,000 subscribers. Like I said, as of, ten, as of this video, we are at 909. Uh, and so we're only uh, 100 and... Come on, you can do it 91, no, 91, 91 thank away. You. There we are. Math. Anyways, everybody, you as always... You got school and your good looks, didn't Look, you? I made it. I made it, okay? I, okay. I, I'm here. It so, was your good looks. Yeah. So you did not do well. I've changed our sign off today. Uh oh. Uh, I have. You, you did this so, without telling me? I did. So I'm, 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 I'm in bad shape. Here we go. Everybody, as always, reboot early, reboot often, turn off CEC, and Keep call. Keep your wire short. Nope. Call tech support. Oh. Call tech support. Oh, uh, where's our tech support numbers? I, I'm about to put it up on the screen. We're going to put it over here. So, everybody, as always, thank you so much, and uh, we Brent. will see you next time. Uh, I'm Adam. And thank you. Thanks, guys. Give us a call at Tech Support. That's our numbers there. Three eight, uh, sorry, three eight six four nine two eight five eight four, or you can email me at adamr at metrohometheater.com. You can call Brent at eight six six eight three nine nine one eight seven extension two two zero three. Brent, when are you available? Uh, 0800 to zero eight hundred to twenty two hundred, which is eight to ten. Yep. Seven days a week, Eastern Standard Time. And now we are starting a Saturday tech support. For Spyclops. For Spyclops, correct. So from 10 a.m. until uh, 5 p.m. Eastern Time, give us a call at 386-492-8584, and we can give you some Spyclops technical support. So, everybody, thank you again for checking in with us. We will see you all next time. Don't forget, bye, Metro.